Hey, how good is your soil? What's its texture like? What about its structure? Is it blocky? Is it granular? Is it platy? What about its bulk density? Or do you even know its porosity? Well, how can we start to manage our land if we don't even understand the properties of our soil? In this video, we'll be looking at the physical properties of soil so that we can then implement the best strategies to ensure a sustainable farm as well as a continuous, consistent yield. My name is Teal Simmons and this is Agriculture Explained. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you feel like I've added any value to it, uh, please share with uh, anyone studying agriculture, uh, any farmers or anyone interested in agriculture and gardening. If you like this video, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think was good um, or if there's anything I could uh, improve upon. Um, so let's get into the video. One of the most important physical properties of our soil is soil texture. Now, soil texture is the size of our soil particles. It's really important to understand our soil texture as this will contribute to other physical and chemical properties of our soil. So there's three soil particles, clay, silt and sand. Clay is the smallest of the three and due to its size it will allow it to be able to be compacted really easily and have very little space between each particle. The space between the particle is referred to as the void space and will contribute to the porosity. Now because clay has very little void space, it has a very low porosity. Clay also has a negative electric charge, causing it to have a very high, um, a very high cationic exchange capacity. This is really important um, in the exchange of nutrients between our soil and our plant. Sand, on the other hand, is, is our largest soil particle, causing it to have a very high void space. This will cause it to have a high porosity. However, sand and silt don't have an electric charge, causing it to have no cation exchange capacity. So one way we can describe our soil texture is the use of a soil diagram. The soil diagram will give you the composition of the soil of the three particles um, and it can be read by reading perpendicular to um, the line. So within the diagram we'll tell you um, a description of your soil such as your soil being loam, uh, clay loam, so, um, sandy loam, clay, um, sandy clay um, and each will have a percentage of each particle. Um, such as uh, sandy loam being about 80% sand and that's red reading perpendicular off the line of that particle. So sandy loam 80% sand, about um, so 25% clay and about 60% um, silt. So knowing those percentages we can predict some uh, physical and chemical properties of our sandy loam soil. So the high amount of sand will have a high porosity, which will cause it to have a high um, filtration and low water holding capacity. And the low amount of clay will cause it to have a low cation exchange capacity. Now it's really important that we understand these characteristics as they will allow us to make uh, suggestions on what is best practiced and the best management strategies we can use on our farm. We want to do this to maintain uh, good yield uh, and to also maintain sustainability on our farm to ensure yield for the future. So an example of this um, for our sandy loam soils growing tomatoes in there. Um, tomatoes prefer good drainage which is uh, a characteristic of our sandy loam soil as the sand will have good porosity which will cause the good drainage. They might see this to um, describe soil and more likely these descriptions, but we can use those descriptions to work out the makeup of our soil from our three particles. So we can use our soil texture to work out um, how we can manage our soil and what is best grown in our soil, as well as predicting chemical and physical properties. Now our next most important physical characteristic of our soil is soil structure. 
Uh, now, soil structure is the arrangement of our soil particles um, into groups called PEDs or aggregates. Now, there's six um, basic structures, uh, and we'll go through um, the structure and um, their permeability. Now, permeability is the main um, effect you get from these, uh, from this characteristic. And permeability basically refers to um, how easy um, things can move through the soil. So things such as uh, air, water, and roots. Uh, and that's pretty much um, all that structure um, contributes to. So with our high um, permeability, we have granular. That is uh, quite small uh, peds or aggregates. Now it has a high permeability because of the small peds. This will allow for roots, uh, water and air to be able to freely uh, move between the soil particles. Uh, much like aggregated soil, um, it's pretty much uh, larger sized peds compared to granular uh, and that also has a high permeability. Next we have blocky soil. This has a moderate permeability which makes it slightly more harder for um, roots water and gases to move within the PEDs. As you can see, the PEDs are a bit more tightly uh, compacted, um, which means there's less space, uh, which makes it harder. There's also prismatic soil structures. That is also um, has a moderate permeability um, and structures in um, prisms and columns. As you can see, the roots, soil and gases can move between them, but it's very hard to move uh, against them. On the low permeability is massive soil. This is highly compacted. Um, as you can see in the diagram, there's nowhere that roots can get through. Uh, there's no gaps between the, uh, the soil particles and it's quite uh, highly compacted. There's also platy soil. This has a very low permeability. As you can see in our diagram, roots um, cannot really puncture through that um, horizontal compacted soil. Even though there's room between them, uh, it's hard for them to uh, permeate through. Now, this they're pretty much um, the six. It's really important that we know these um, so we can actually assess how um, able roots, water, and gases can move through our soil, uh, which will in turn help our plants. So if you have um, either massive or platy soil, that's a sign of compaction, normally um, along roadways or uh, frequently traveled paths. If you have um, livestock with um, hooves, that can sometimes cause platy and massive soil as they compact the, the soil particles down. If you have this, you want to uh, probably move towards um, a better permeability soil, probably um, implementing better strategies and practices. Um, if you have prismatic or blocky, you might want to try and look towards um, some more um, practices that can um, improve the permeability and then you really want to be aiming for these if you're growing uh, pastures or plants as this is the ideal for plants. So we've already looked at soil structure and soil texture both of them being more uh, qualitative me measures of our physical characteristics but now we'll be looking at some more quantitative uh, measurements. Bulk density which is the measurement of the amount of solid soil in a specific space. I find it easiest um, to understand bulk density by the formula, which is the mass of the soil in the specific space it takes up. Meaning that if we have little mass in our volume, it's going to have a low bulk density. And if we have a lot of mass in our uh, volume, it's going to have a high bulk density. So we can calculate the exact amount um, of bulk density uh, that our soil has. Um, to give us an, a specific number which can describe uh, our soil structure. Now it's important to understand bulk density as it will allow us to make um, accurate predictions about how um, permeable our soil is, such as so our um, high bulk density, which may be caused by a lot of compaction, will have a low uh, permeability and our low bulk density will probably have a high permeability. However, our low bulk density soil might be prone to erosion as there's actually not much um, mass there. 
So another uh, quantitative measurement of our soil is porosity. Porosity is a physical characteristic which refers to the space between our soil particles. This space is referred to as the void or pore space and is the empty space between um, our particles as you can see here. Now if you have high porosity, it means that there's a lot of space as you can see in the diagram. This will have a high permeability which will allow um, roots to move through our soil or um, gases and water. Now porosity will also tell us how um, easy roots, water and gases can move in into our soil but essentially giving us a measurement of our soil structure. So both of these will give a, um, a measurement that we can use to suggest our soil structure um, and essentially different ways of determining um, permeability and the movement of uh, things through our soil. So here we have it. Here are our four uh, main physical properties that contribute to our soil's function. Now, it's really important that we understand how all these um, properties affect our soil and the plants that they interact with. Um, and it's really important that we understand these as it will allow us to uh, maintain sustainability through um, ad adopting better practices and man management strategies. In particular, we want to pay attention to the permeability of our soil, which is contributed by these three, as well as the predictions that our soil texture can make for our soil. Now, using all of this, we can then um, identify our soil's capability uh, and then our whole farm uh, classification to allow us to be more sustainable uh, and use um, practices and management most suited to our land. So there we go, thank you for watching this video. If you feel like I gave a valuable resource to you, please like and subscribe. Uh, and if you uh, know anyone studying agriculture, farming, or enjoys gardening, or just agriculture in general, uh, please share this with them. We're trying to grow this channel, um, so it would be a uh, great help. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, and I'll see you in the next video.